Hmm? It doesn't come because of youth or because of anything like that. Okay, now. The second one that we want to look at is the good spirit. This one is, is, is quite simple. Nehemiah 9.20, you also gave your good spirit to instruct them. So there, are, there is a good spirit and there are bad spirits. So there is a negative spiritual. Of course, you know that. But I just feel like we should emphasize it. Uh -huh. The good spirit is the Holy Spirit. I say, we're going to plod through this today. I just want to impress certain things on you. The bad spirit is the spirit of Satan. The good spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The bad spirit is the spirit of fear. Hmm? The bad spirit is the spirit of harlotry. It's the spirit of divination. It's different from the spirit of your father. It's different from the spirit of Jesus. Let's go to the third one. We're going to look at it. Third thing we're looking at is the good treasure. Hmm? There are treasures and there are treasures. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 12. Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. What is this telling us? There is good treasure and there is bad treasure. Now, let us see if we can differentiate them so that we don't just see treasure and you think that it is good. I mean, will not actually differentiate it for you. We expect you to know it because you are now a spiritual man. Huh? Because it is with the New Testament that we now use. It is the knowledge, the knowledge. Huh? The, 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 the Old Testament was in darkness. But light is the New Testament. It is the light of the New that we now read the Old Testament. Okay? We can now understand the Old Testament because the light has come with Jesus. Hmm? Good treasure that is found on earth must be kept in reserve in heaven. It can also be useful on earth, but it must be kept for us in heaven. Hmm? Bad treasure is found on earth. And only useful or not. It doesn't have anything to do with eternal life. Huh? Let me digress for a minute. It is good to exercise every morning. Bodily exercise is good, but it only is only, but it is from the eternal scheme of things, it is bad. Because it has no eternal value. But godliness has eternal value. So, I know a lot of us, we are concerned about how we look, how we feel. We spend a lot of time exercising. There are Christians that will go to the gym every morning. I have the feeling this character that is sitting here goes to the gym every morning. He doesn't go. <laughs> I have the feeling. But some of them, you see, they have guns. They have guns in their, in their hands. It is godliness that is more important. Hmm? Okay, bodily exercise for women is making the hair, doing the face, doing everything. Now, now you don't even know what is what now because they have false bottoms now. They have most everything. That they they have everything you can buy them from the from the, the grocery store now. Uh, but <laughs> the real thing is godliness. Hmm? So. We must understand what is treasure. Okay? Some people think that 
treasury is money they have in the bank. No, Jesus says, let your treasure be in heaven because the bank can collapse. Huh? They can devalue the money. Understand? Okay. The other one is good pleasure. Hmm? More interesting ones now. There is pleasure that is good according to scripture. And a lot of what we call pleasure is bad. Hmm? Psalm 51 verse 18. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. So God says there is good pleasure. Once you see that God identifies something to be good, huh? the same thing, there must be bad things of the same description. So since there is good pleasure, there must be bad pleasure. So let's 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 do the differentiation. Good pleasure is often felt in your heart, and you can remember it. Hmm? Bad pleasure is often felt in your flesh. It is harmful. It's not beneficial to you. Good pleasure is always beneficial. It contributes to your physical and spiritual well-being. Bad pleasure huh? only contributes to your appetite. It does not contribute anything to your well-being. So you have to make sure that you are making you are making the right choices between the good pleasure and the bad pleasure. Huh? Bad pleasure is detrimental to your physical, mental, and emotional health. Huh? If there is something that you can engage in that gives you pleasure today, but tomorrow when you think about it, you regret it, it is bad pleasure. Hmm? It, bring, it, gives, it brings regret to you. That pleasure is no good for killing you as pleasure. It is not. Because good pleasure lasts. Huh? Bad pleasure is fleeting. Often ends in regret. If I ask you some of the pleasures that you had in the year 2020, you can't remember them again. Hmm? But you can remember your good, the good pleasure of the Lord in 2020. You have testimonies that you still remember and you will continue to remember. Huh? God saved me from armed robbers 30 years ago. I still remember it today. Huh? Some people beat me up when I was in secondary school. I don't even remember it. Okay, so there are things that operate only in your flesh. Okay, now, good pleasure might be initially painful might be initially inconvenient, but afterwards is pleasurable. Hmm? Remember, weeping endures for the night. Joy comes in the morning. So don't despise it because it starts with weeping. Huh? It starts with something that is inconvenient. But that pleasure is initially pleasurable but afterwards, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It gives you a bad memory. When you remember it, huh? some bad pleasure, you might not be able to get out of it. But then it, it comes from that bad pleasure. It just happened. Huh? Some bad pleasure. You have a child out of wed wed wedlock. You can't escape from it. Huh? So, <clears throat> the Bible says, God predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. He's talking about the pleasure that has been appointed to you. Huh? And when you meditate on that pleasure, it will continue to give you pleasure. That knowledge of it will continue to give you pleasure. That's why Jesus said, don't fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. When you realize that the kingdom of God not the kingdom of men has been appointed for you. It is something that just rejoices the heart. Always, all the time. Irrespective of the exchanges of the Naira or the cost of groceries. Huh? But the Bible says, 
people of pleasure. We think it's one Proverbs 21, 17. Huh? What we mean is poverty. The poverty is in the spirit. As also the differentiation between poor and poor. There are people that are poor, but they are rich. There are people that are rich, but are poor. You must be able to navigate the two because the scripture expects you to have the understanding to differentiate between them. Solomon says, some of the vanities that give us pleasure in our youth. The time is going to come in our old age when we shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Ecclesiastes 12. Remember the foundation we laid. If it doesn't last, it's a bad pleasure. If you will have no, ple no, no pleasure in them in your old age, it is not a good pleasure. Huh? It is not a good pleasure. But look at what Hebrews 12, 11 says. No chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And so there is something about the chastening of the Lord that might be painful initially, but it is designed to give us Eternal pleasure. That was John, John, uh, uh, Jerry Brown Johnson that first led me to understand that the Ten Commandments, the expression of love, hmm? so they are love commandments. The reason he gave it to us because he wants to move us to eternal pleasure. Because God does not want to deny you of his good pleasure, he wants to give you his good pleasure. But he wants to remove you from his bad pleasure, from the bad pleasure, which is Boku, you understand the French, which is considerable in the world. Then we have what we call the good wine. I drink, in fact, in fact, the wine that I drink is really no wine. Because they, they talk on things, non alcoholic wine. There is nothing like non alcoholic wine. If it's not alcoholic, it is not wine. <laughs> you know, I mean, wine, by its very definition, is alcoholic. That's what makes it wine. There is a fermentation that has taken place. Huh? But the Bible talks about good wine. No, I don't even have it here. Okay, I don't have it here. The Bible talks about good wine. The Bible says that Jesus... Huh? was that he turned water into wine. But then it was described spiritually that the water that he turned into wine was good wine. It says, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests are well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. So what they call the good wine initially must be different from the one that Jesus gave them. Hmm? Okay? So, what do you understand about the good wine? Hmm? Be spiritually minded. Jesus says, I will not taste of this fruit of the vine until I take it new, taste it new. Kingdom of God. Because the good wine is the Holy Spirit. You understand? Don't be drunk with wine. Hmm? But be filled with the Spirit of God. The bad wine huh, is champagne. So understand it, because they will tell you champagne is, 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 is the Baba Saleh of the wine. It's all a lie. They're just fooling you, okay? The good wine comes from the fruit of the Spirit. So when you have the good wine, you have the fruit of the Spirit of God. There are in nine dimensions, although it is one fruit. Huh? The bad wine comes from the fruit of the vine, the physical wine. Okay? God has set some things in the in, in the in the natural to give us an understanding of the spiritual. Okay, so it is good to be drunk in the spirit. It is bad to be drunk with wine. Hmm? I've been drunk in the spirit before. It's an incredible feeling that comes over you when you are drunk in the spirit. Huh? I fasted for 55 days. 
and then about people surrounded me and they were praying for me and I became drunk. Hmm? God will enable you to experience it. So we must know the difference between the good wine and the bad wine. Please, the one that you should want to drink is not the champagne. Am I talking to somebody? The one that you should desire is the good wine, is the Holy Spirit. Then there is the good fruit. Who's good there? Huh? Jesus says, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Huh? The good fruit hmm, does not grow old. The good fruit does not become broken. The good fruit manifests in your character, in your behavior. Huh? Whereas the bad fruit always go bad. Mm -hmm. Remember the foundation. You never last. Okay? So there is that differentiation. Huh? The good fruit is that which you must manifest. Huh? Since God has called us to bear fruit and that our fruit will endure. If it doesn't endure, it is a bad fruit. We are only good on Monday, but bad on Tuesday. You are not fruitful. Hmm? The fruit that he wants from us must be the fruit that lasts. It cannot be the fruit that is like the mango fruit, the natural fruit. Huh? Then there is the good part. That will be relatively easy. Look, 153. God has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away is empty. So you know that from even just this scripture, riches are not good things. Hmm? Unless we start breaking down riches themselves, because there are riches and there are riches. Okay? So which one is he talking about? He's talking about the riches that has to do with natural wealth, material wealth, financial wealth. Huh? But the hungry, he feels with good things. Why? Because they are hungry. They are hungry. Okay? Now, Hosea says, Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. They set up kings, but not by me. They made princes, but they don't acknowledge them. From their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves that they might be cut off. Huh? They make idols with money. Some people worship money, even in the church. Remember a man that wrote a book, Money Coming to Me Now. Money Coming to Me that's what he preaches. He comes to church and everybody chants it. One money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. And he tells them that when you are saying that money is just coming, just coming, just coming. Except that in order to get this money, you have to put some money down. They like. Huh? It's like we're talking good things. The good things are the things of God. The bad things are the things of men. And so we must make sure that it is the things of God that preoccupy us. Galatians 4.18 It is good to be zealous in a good thing always. And not only when I'm present with you. Don't only feel that you must do something good. I see you wasting your time because you are dealing with an invisible God. Huh? The good things are the things that we receive in this life. Hmm? We turn out to be bad things in God. Look at Jesus' story. Luke 16, 24. 
the rich man is now in Hades. And he calls on Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime, you will receive your good things. What are the good things? The things of this world. Hmm? The things that are valuable to men, but abomination to God. Jesus says, that which man esteems is abomination in the sight of God. Likewise, Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, you are tormented. So, understanding the good things are the things of the kingdom of God that are reserved for the righteous in heaven. The bad things are the so-called good things of this world that are received in this world but have no value in the world to come. The good things are the bad things that we receive for Christ's sake. I'm going to say that again because it seems like something taught to us. The good things are the bad things we receive for Christ's sake. Even though they are bad because they are received for Christ's sake, they become good. The bad things are the good things that we receive in this world for our own sake. So there are all kinds of things that we are excited about. Sometimes we come to give testimony about them. But they are not good things. Huh? Because they only have value in this world. And they are given just for our sake. The good things are the crosses that we carry for Christ's sake. When we carry a cross, that is a good thing. They didn't know. They were crying for him when he was going to the cross. He says, don't cry for me, daughters of, Jer of, of Jerusalem. The bad things are the things that simply give us carnal pleasure. Hmm? They are pleasurable, carnally, but they are no good. Hmm? They are not good. And they cannot scheme of things from God's perspective. Huh? Then there is the good gift. Both the evil man and the good man give good gifts to their children. But you must know, because in that presentation, the good gift that the evil man gives is bread and fish. Whereas the good gift that God gives is himself. Huh? Understanding of the principle. God never gives anything but himself. The only thing God gives is himself. Hmm? To use that as a criteria, they will understand so many things. If it is not of God, if it is not from God, if it is not through God, if it is not to God, it is not good. God only gives himself. And that's why he gave us himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Huh? So, this is every good gift. So, there are bad gifts. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So, there are good gifts, but there are spiritual gifts. And they are from God. There are bad gifts, they are from men. They are physical gifts. God can give you a bad gift. Huh? Because you might need it in this dispensation. But it has no value in his eternal scheme of things. He gave me a cup. It has no value. Huh? You must understand that. That a cup has no spiritual value. Hmm? Except that in the giving of it, it affects my heart. Then there is the one that we, we, we spend the whole fellowship. You can you can you can you can see on my YouTube channel. Uh, good success. Once you hear him define something as good, 
know that there must be the bad ones. Joshua 1 is this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Hmm? Success in the world is not good. I'll tell you, I'll tell you now, because you, you, if, it, if it was a discussion, People will come and come, they, they will fight me over it. Huh? Success in the world is not good success. Hmm? Those who prosper in the world fail in the kingdom of God. Huh? Good success leads to eternal life. Hmm? So you are not going to get eternal life because they double your salary, because you won the lottery because you became governor of the central bank or even the president of Nigeria. No. Huh? Good success is achieved with righteousness. That's the instrument of it. Huh? Good success last. Money grows wings and flies away. You need not come with it you will not take it with you. Yeah? So, the success of the world is fleeting. In many respects, it is illusory. Hmm? It is delusional. And part of the problem is this. Sin is the quickest, surefire way to succeed in the world. If you want me to give you a formula for success in this world, I say go and sin. Go and do pen robbery. Go and do yahoo yahoo. Huh? Some people will be going to college trying to do something, you will get it overnight. Huh? Some people came to my estate. The driver, the driver of one of the people in my estate brought robbers who are hiding in the boot of his car, of, of, the, of the man's car. He came to the security. When he got to the man's house, he came out of the boot. And brought a gun to him. This just happened just this weekend. Brought a gun to him, robbed him of things in the house, carried him with them back outside. The man could not could not shout. What are they trying to get? They are trying to succeed. Bank robbers succeed. The tabernacles of, of robbers succeed in the world. But they will get home, they will laugh. They will say, look at what we achieved. Huh? Well, the Bible tells us in Psalm 73, verse 12. Psalm 73, verse 12. People will fight you over it. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Let your prosperity be in the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that you are not supposed to make money in the world, but that is not your primary determination. Hmm? That is not your heart's desire. If it comes, it comes because God gives people the power to get wealth. But know that if it's monetary success, it cannot last. Huh? So the Bible says, he who is least among you will be great. Make sure you are least. Make sure you are always small in your own eyes so that you will have the good success of God. God works out salvation through contradictions. And one of the ways he does it is that he brings out a reversal of fortunes. Huh? So let us see how he brings that to pass quickly in Ezekiel 17.24. God says, all the trees of the field, you know that a man is a tree. Huh? 
We are talking spiritual language now. Hmm? They are trees of righteousness. All the trees of a field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree and exalted the low tree and dried up the green tree and make the dry tree to flourish. That's what happens with the rich man and Lazarus. Huh? He brought down the high tree and exalted the low tree, which was Lazarus. Then there is blessing. Huh? People call their children blessing, 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 blessing. But there is bad blessing because there is good blessing. Proverbs 24, 25. Those who rebuke the wicked will have the light and a good blessing will come upon them. God decided to define it. He is going to give these ones a good blessing. If there's a good blessing, there's a bad blessing. Hmm? Okay? There's a good blessing, there's a bad blessing. Let us even say, let us understand the principle. Huh? There are blessings that people have and God does give their blessings. Malachi 2.2. Two. And so, what they have become cursed blessings. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you did not take it to heart. So, huh? Make sure that the blessings that you have are the ones that don't bring sorrow. Huh? Because the good blessing is the blessing of the Lord. It makes rich, not necessarily financially, and it doesn't add any sorrow. Huh? God gave me a car. My car was not a good blessing. Because I can have an accident in it and it will bring sorrow. Hmm? The bad blessing is the blessing of men, the blessing that is of this world. The good blessing is a spiritual blessing. You and I have already received. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. But a financial blessing but material blessing is not a good blessing. I'm not saying reject it. It is not a good blessing. Don't set your heart on it. All the money that people gave you last year, where is it now? You don't spend that. It has disappeared. But the blessing of God that is upon you can never disappear. And be careful. Bible, Jesus says, riches are deceitful. Solomon says, they make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. So the riches cannot be a good blessing. And when the Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, the riches that he's talking about there is not financial blessing. No. Huh? Say, Jesus became poor, that we might become rich. People are thinking money. You are wasting your time. Hmm? You are wasting your time. Okay? How did Jesus become poor? He became poor by coming down to earth from heaven. Okay? He came down to earth from heaven to give us an avenue to go to heaven from earth. And that's how we get rich. We are appointed to heaven. So the good blessing are blessings that benefit God. You can bless the name of the Lord. You can bless God. Hmm? The bad blessings are the ones that benefit men. Huh? They are the ones that benefit men. But let me tell you, let me tell you, which one of God, huh? because you know, there was, there was a situation in the law. The law says that if you are not of a tribe of Judah, if, if, you are, if you are not a Levite, you cannot enter the Holy of Holies. Hmm? But faith makes a way for David. How did God, how did, how, how did David enter the Holy of Holies and he was from the tribe of Judah? Huh? He said, 
and will enter his courts with what? With thanksgiving. Huh? Okay, so he found another way by faith. Okay, so sometimes when you help somebody, huh? the blessing is actually on you because it affects your heart. And anything that affects your heart for good is a blessing. Hmm? Anything that affects your heart for good is a blessing. Anything that affects your flesh for good is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. Hmm? So, good blessings benefit the Lord because by Him, all things were created that are in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Everything is created for God. So, then we have riches. There are riches that are just for this world. Okay? And the riches that are just for this world, they are deceitful, according to Jesus. Matthew 13, 22. He who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. So be very, very careful about riches because riches have a way of conditioning a man's heart. People say in the world, power corrupts. Huh? Riches also corrupt. Okay? Good riches are the ones that arise from the blessing of God. Bad riches are the ones that arise from the works of men. Huh? He was very industrious. He made a lot of money. The riches are no good. Huh? Good riches come from faith. James 2.5 God has not chosen the poor of this world. Has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith? Although they are poor, he has appointed them to be rich in faith. And because they are rich in faith, they can draw all kinds of blessings from the Lord. Hmm? Bad riches come when we are solely dependent on money. Jesus says in Luke 6, 24, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. You can see that that was the message of Abraham to the rich man. You receive your consolation in this life. And this man, huh? The road has been designed. Reverse, sorry. Then there is good reward. There, is, there are some rewards that are bad. And there are some rewards that are good. According to the scripture, once you hear of a good reward, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him. Hmm? He who finds a wife. Finds a good thing. Huh? Tell somebody, where is the Palipolos? He who finds a wife, finds a good thing. I receive strength. <laughs> the good reward is the reward that God gives. The bad reward is the reward that comes from man. And so sometimes uh, when we are praying it, we are looking for the word from men. The way we are praying, because we are focused on men. We know they are listening to us. Even the phonetics that we use will be different. Huh? Well, you know, like Jesus, I said, when you want to pray, go inside your closet and pray. Hmm? So that, huh? because people who pray, to receive praise from men, they have their reward. And their reward huh, is different. Let's look at the two different rewards. According to scripture, surely there is a reward for the righteous. That's the one that is for you. The reward that is for the righteous. Huh? Only with your eyes will you look and see the reward of the wicked. There's a reward for the wicked. They all get rewards. Everybody gets a reward. Huh? Only that. It's a righteous that is appointed for you. I beg you, please. Okay. Hmm? Bad blessings are not any blessings. Sometimes they come from heaven. 
but they don't give spiritual life. Huh? They don't give spiritual life like a can. Good blessings are spiritual blessings. Those blessings are in heavenly places in Christ. They are in heavenly places in Christ. Then there is good knowledge. The Bible identifies knowledge and knowledge. Hmm? Divides knowledge from knowledge. Second Chronicles 30.22 and Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. That already told you what the good knowledge is. Huh? The good knowledge is the knowledge of God and of the things of God. That knowledge is the knowledge of men and the things of men. From the time we are born, our parents are determined that we must get the knowledge of men and of the things of men. Huh? It is knowledge that we use to gain the world. It's different from the knowledge that you use to gain the kingdom of God. Hmm? Okay? Good knowledge is what God wants us to know. God does not want us to know that knowledge. That was what Adam and Eve blundered with in the garden. Huh? Bad knowledge is what the devil wants us to know, to have. Huh? Let me put it this way. God does not want us to know what is evil. So I'm going to tell somebody, hmm? God is going to wipe out your memory at a certain point in your, in your relationship with him. Huh? He will wipe out your memory. You will not know evil. Again, you will not know anything that is evil. It will not come into your mind. Hmm? You will have absolutely zero knowledge of evil. Romans 16, 19. I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. God doesn't want you to know evil. Huh? Don't say you want to find out what your bunny are doing in that place just to know what, what it is that they are doing. You don't need to know. You understand? Okay? Don't use your don't use long throat to go to take your carry yourself to places where you, you, you know, Ephraim is departed from the Lord. Leave him alone. Let him go. When they have dealt with him, you know, you, 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 you know what, you know, huh? he, 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 he will use his legs to come back. Hmm? So, good knowledge is the knowledge of God. I say everything that is good comes from God. Hmm? Good knowledge always comes from God. Hmm? God is the source of all true knowledge and wisdom. Hmm? Bad knowledge always comes from men. We exalt men that have all this bad knowledge. When I'm a Elon Musk, whether, uh, the, 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 whatever it is, this one that made a car, we don't want that did this, this one, you know, huh? they are all useless knowledge. You can have no, you can have zero of this knowledge of men huh? and just fill your heart with the knowledge of God and you are secure eternally. Hmm? Why? Because good knowledge gives life, bad knowledge kills steal and destroys. Good knowledge is the truth because all that we know now, we, know, we only know it in parts. Bad knowledge is a lie. Hmm? Bad knowledge is a lie. Let me digress. Uh, you will laugh at me. Hmm? I'm surprised. You know, there, there is no question that Donald Trump is going to lose the election. But I'm even shocked that people are voting for him. Uh -huh. I'm shocked that people are voting for this man in spite of everything they know about him. Hmm? He lies all the time. All the time. There is a debate that is coming up on Tuesday and every sentence that is going, in fact, somebody was advising Kamal Harris, before you say anything, say, that's a lie. What you have said is a lie. They continue. But every time, just say, that one is a lie. That's because he's going to tell lies. And yet, people want to be lied to. Good knowledge is the knowledge of the scriptures. Bad knowledge is book knowledge. So he knows book, oh, he knows book, oh, he knows book, oh, is very good. It only lasts for this life. Huh? It only lasts for this life. Huh? 
my my father-in-law, his book library is enough for people to be paying money to come and to come and rent books in it. Well done. Hmm? He has so many books. Who is this? Destiny. Your mind, please. Destiny. He did that during the prayer meeting. Hmm? Good knowledge is used to gain the kingdom of God. Bad knowledge is used to gain the world. Bad knowledge is the knowledge of evil. It comes from the heart and it is deceptive. So that takes us to good understanding. First Samuel 25 3. Abigail was a woman of good understanding. Incidentally, the last time I told you that uh, uh, um, uh, Barabbas was the only man in scripture that was called a good I, I found I discovered another one. Just here. Someone of good understanding can understand the scriptures because God has enabled him and opened his heart. Hmm? Someone of bad understanding can only understand material and physical things. And that, I believe, is the problem of the church that I went to recently. Hmm? They have understanding of material and physical things. They have limited understanding of spiritual things. Hmm? Then there is a good name. Good name is important to people. That's why, you know, I mean, <laughs> people pay money to, for cheap things. Hmm? Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than riches. But people use money to buy a good name. Hmm? They use money to buy a good name. They get influencers. This government is doing it. There are people that are, that are just writing about them on the internet. Hmm? I'm manipulating. Hmm? It's a waste of time because a good name is given by God. A good name is a name that earns God's approval. A good name, according to men, is a bad name because it is given by men. A good name that is a bad name is a man's reputation. It comes from your credentials. It comes from your status in the world. That's the end of it. People in the world are not important. God is the only one that you really need to, 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 to bother about. Huh? A good name means God knows you by name. A bad name means God does not know you. Huh? Jesus says, they will say, Lord, Lord, he will tell them, I don't know you. Huh? A good name comes with the righteousness of God. A bad name hmm? comes with sins. Hmm? A good name and through the reproach of men, I'm going to say it again so that you can hear me. Kingdom dynamics. A good name will earn you the reproach of men. Don't despise it. A bad name will earn you the praise of men. Men are unreliable. Don't base anything. Huh? Men are hypocrites. They will shout Hosanna now. They will say kill him tomorrow. Hmm? A good name comes with godliness. A bad name coexists with ungodliness and with a sinful life. A good name is earned by being truthful. Hmm? A bad name that man call good is earned by telling lies. You tell them lies, they believe you. Hmm? Say that man is good. They're wasting your time. Only God is good. A good name comes to those who fear God. A bad name comes with those who fear men. That's how Saul lost the kingdom. He was afraid of men instead of fearing God. A good name is for those approved of God. A bad name is of those approved of men. You don't need the approval of men. It's a waste of time. And Africa, anyway, you don't need the approval. Huh? 
there's good works. We've talked about that. Who found it? Over three, three, three different sections. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What are good works? We've said this again and again. Good works are the works that express faith in Jesus. And faith itself is a gift. Bad works are the works that express faith in yourself or that do not express any faith in Jesus Christ. Good works are only those works that glorify God, that bring glory to God, that they may see your good works and not glorify you, but glorify your Father in heaven. Bad works are those works that glorify men. Once you open your television, and you see them glorifying one man, you know that they are wasting their time. You read the newspaper, and you see them glorifying one man. It's a waste of time. Just laugh at them and say, oh, I share it. Hmm? They are, it's a complete waste of time. Hmm? Okay? What works are the powers of Babel that men build, that read to the sky. Hmm? We, are, we are building it in, from Genesis. We are still building it now. Huh? Watch Khalifa. It's reaching the sky. Huh? Except the Lord builds. They labor in vain that build it. The towers fell. It's in the Bible. Hmm? On the day that the towers fell. When the towers fell in New York. Huh? They came down. Google your Bible. You will see that on the day that the towers to fall. They fall the towers. When they say now, watch Khalifa. Every time they're going to have to knock it down. Hmm? Because... It cannot last. Huh? Then there is good news. Huh? Once you hear of the good news, you know there is bad news. The Bible says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. You already know what the good news is. The good news is the gospel of the kingdom of God. You understand? The good news is not that you won the lottery or you got a promotion. I lie. Not the good news. Huh? The bad news is of the is the news about something in the world. You understand? Turn on your television. In fact, the news that makes news is always bad news. Somebody died today. There is an explosion here. There is, you know, some, some arm robbers came. Some, you know, ah. That is what sells papers. Huh? But the good news is the news of good things to come. I'm not necessarily here yet. But they come. They are coming. That's why we rejoice in hope. We're going to get that. Huh? Okay? So the good news, the bad news, is the news of the present. The news of the present is always bad. Huh? The good news is the gospel that tells us about a kingdom that is coming and is already here. The same thing with a good report. What is a good report? Huh? Not the one that your child brings home and says, oh, I got a good report from my... You know, the good report is always about God. Hmm? Whatever things are of good report, meditate on these things. The good report is always about God because he's the only one that is good. The bad report is about men. There is nothing good in men. That's everything about God is good. Mm -hmm. Then there is a good hope. Second Thessalonians 2.16 Our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope. He has given us good hope. Now, good hope is always the hope that is based on the promises of God. Hmm? Bad hope is the hope that arises from your imagination. Something you just want to happen. Hmm? Cast down that imagination. Huh? Good hope is in God. Bad hope is in men. Hmm? Good hope never disappoints. You are hoping that by now 
you should have been a multimillionaire. It hasn't happened yet. Huh? Because it's not a good hope. Even your being a millionaire is not, it's not, it's not a hope. Huh? Bad hope always disappoints. Even when you get what you are hoping for, it will not satisfy you. Hmm? It cannot satisfy. Why? Because good hope is based on eternal and spiritual verities. Whereas bad hope is based on temporal and physical illusions of men. Hmm? The world itself is an illusion. And it's going to, <laughs> we're going to, heaven and earth is going to pass away. Hmm? What will remain? The word of God. Then there is a the good man. We have talked about that several days. The good, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He is the one who trains your footsteps. I say, tell people this, they start arguing with me. Huh? The good man is a man from heaven, Jesus. The bad man is a man of dust, the man of the earth. The good man is the man that is born of God, the new creation hmm? of which you are a part. Hmm? The bad man is the one we celebrate. That's why some of us don't bother with that. Physical bad day. I only celebrate when I became a new creation. Then there's the good heart. Look, at 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who haven't had the word with a noble and good heart. Keep it and bear fruit with it. The good heart is a godly heart. It is the heart that can only grow in the things of God. Hmm? In the good heart, in here, in, 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 in internal goodness, it is not external. In the good heart, in here, genuine goodness. Whereas the bad heart is an ungodly heart. Mm -hmm. It might be godly, it might, it might look good on the outside. But the goodness is hypocritical. It is not inside. The good heart is the mind of Christ. You can put it on. The bad heart, the main problem is the heart of flesh. So the promise of God, he says in Ezekiel eleven nineteen, 19, I will put a new spirit within them and take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. So the good heart is responsive to correction and admonition. If you are not responsive to correction and admonition, you don't have a good heart. You have a stony heart. Huh? The evil heart is the heart that is of men. Is the heart that we were born with. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which define the man. Hmm? Solomon says, the heart is deceitful. Above all things and desperately wicked. And so God needs to give us a different heart entirely. Huh? Then there is the good cheer, Matthew 9, 22. Jesus says, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. When we are of good cheer, we don't complain. Even though the situation might still be unpleasant, we know that it's going to get better. Hmm? That's when we are of good cheer. When we are bad here, we are excited about something that will not last. You are wasting your time. Huh? That thing you are excited about, you are going to cry about it later on. You are going to grumble and complain about it later on. It has just fooled you. So, good cheer comes because we have received forgiveness of sin. Bad cheer comes, for example, from winning the lottery. Huh? You won one billion dollars in the lottery, and you are so happy. I like that's bad chair. Bad chair is happiness. It's just happening. Hmm? Go and Google people that have won the lottery and find out what happened to them. Huh? Bad chair comes with time and chance, and the same time and chance with time and chance it away. Good chair comes from having hope in God. 
and it comes from rejoicing in that hope that you have in God because that hope will not pass away. That hope will not disappoint. Good cheer comes from rejoicing in the Lord, not in rejoicing in things, in rejoicing in possessions, in rejoicing in incidental situations and circumstances. Huh? It comes from rejoicing that your name is written in the book of life. We have good cheer because we know by faith that all things will work together for our good. As I said earlier on, we have good cheer we know because we know that weeping something endures for a night. Joy is going to come in the morning. And so the last two, one is the good fight. The good fight is the fight of faith. With that fight of faith, the Bible says we can lose hold of eternal life. Huh? The good fight is a fight that you fight that leads to eternal life. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. The bad fight is a fight of the flesh. Oh, you, you know, the fight in the bus, fight in the market, fight in the playground huh? is a simple fight. It's a waste of time. You are just messing up yourself. Hmm? And it's the same with warfare. There is good warfare and bad warfare. Huh? All the warfare that you saw in the Old Testament are repeated in the New Testament. Spiritual now. Hmm? So, the good warfare is spiritual warfare. You are in a war zone. I not think it, but you are. Huh? Bad warfare. Is physical warfare. Men take guns and start shooting themselves. They're wasting their time. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Let us pray. Ask God to lead you aright to determine good from evil. Ask God to give you the wisdom to choose the good. He said, this is life. This is death. Choose life. They can never choose life. It's not possible. Man cannot choose life. Because life is anathema to man. Life is anathema to the flesh. The flesh only knows death. Ask God to give you the grace to choose life. The Lord God Almighty. You have come that I may have life and have it abundantly. Let me choose the life that you came all the way from heaven to give. The life of the flesh that profits nothing. It's a prayer that I want us to carry away today and to continue praying it. Say, Lord God Almighty, only you can open my heart. Choose for me. Lead me to green pasture. Lead me along the path that leads to life, along the paths that lead to you. Lead me along the paths of eternal life. Let every step I take, take me one step nearer to you. Teach me, O oh God, to appreciate the beauty of holiness. Enable me, Lord,
to love your good pleasure and not the pleasure of the flesh. Be my good pleasure. Enable me to fight the good fight of faith. And not the bad fight of the flesh. But whenever I win in the flesh, I should cut my losses and name them one by one. Give me the grace to know. But I often win by losing. So I don't see the way men see. But I see the way you see. Give me, my God and my Father, the heart that you have promised. Take away the stony heart. Give me the heart of flesh so that I don't, I don't reject your correction. I don't reject this, the chastening of your Holy Spirit. Not me to put all of my hope, all of my trust, my expectations in you. And let me rejoice in that hope. Enable me to do the work of faith. That men may see my good works and glorify you, O God. Father Lord God Almighty, give me the wisdom that is from above. I believe it was Barnabas that raised that prayer the other day. The wisdom that is of God. Give me good understanding of the scriptures. Give me, oh God, the knowledge of you. Help me to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Father, Lord God Almighty, let me not miss my reward from you. Let me understand that you have blessed me with all spiritual blessings. For they are in the heavenly places. Make me understand, oh God, that my good things are in heaven reserved for me. Let me choose the good path that is you. For it is you who are my portion. I ask you, O oh God, let me bear good fruits the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruit that endures. Finally, let us ask the Lord, say our Lord and our Father, open up for us in this fellowship your good treasure. For you are our good shepherd. And we have asked everything in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen and Amen. Mrs. Bada, please go.
And the people that go talk. No, okay. Um, Ruth, can you come? I think you better come and stand here so that you are speaking to the mic here. Father, well, thank you. The Father and the Lord God Almighty, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you all the adoration, O God, because there is none like you. Father and Lord God Almighty, we thank you for how far you brought us, O God. We thank you for this word that we have listened to. Father and Lord God Almighty, we ask, O God, that we will not just be the hearers, O God, we will be the doer of the word in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our Lord God Almighty, we ask, O God, that your spirit will live in us. Will teach us, O oh God. Father, Lord God, we ask, O oh God, that everything we do will be to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, our life will be for you, O oh God. We will not be self centered, O oh God. Father, Lord God, we ask, O oh God, that you speak to us at all times. Father, be our director, be our everything, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord God Almighty, at the end of God, let us be among those that will come and live with you in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, make us oh God, to live a sin-free life in the name of Jesus. Even when we want to sin, Father, we ask oh God that you come and speak to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to hear you more. We want to see you more. Father, Lord God Almighty, open our eyes more in the name of Jesus. Father, open our ears, oh God. In the name of Jesus, but I will receive strength, O oh God, to overcome everything that does not give you glory. In the name of Jesus, the strength to move, the strength to read our Bible, the strength to speak to you, God, but I will receive in the name of Jesus. And so, Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, that even in this remaining months of this year, Father, that you be with us in the name of Jesus. Father, direct our path. Lead us, O oh God, in everything we do. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you provide for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, help us, O oh God, to be blessings unto others, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask, O oh God, that you take all the glory, you take all the honor, you take all the adoration. Father, we ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we will testify more and more to the glory of your name, in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive strength, O oh God. We receive peace from you. Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask, O oh God, that you comfort all those who need to be comforted in the name of Jesus. Father, you heal all those who need to be healed in the name of Jesus. We speak peace in the assistance in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask, O oh God, that you take all the glory. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for how far you have kept us here, O oh God. Thank you because you have been our sustainer. You have been our everything, O oh God. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We bless your name, O oh God, for bread, for life, O oh God. Father, we do not take you for granted. Father, we worship your name. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father and God, you are a covenant keeping God. Your covenant you will not break. You have said you will not alter that word that proceeds out of your lips. Father, this is your word. You say, Whosoever we touch and pray for, you will heal. Jehovah King of Glory, we ask for your healing this morning in the name of Jesus. Every single person that is here, let there be healing. In the name of Jesus, Father, be glorified then. in our flesh, in our mind, in our body, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Does anybody have the testimony? It seems like we have to take testimonies. Are you, are you coming over here? Sweetie, O oh Lord, let my name be written in the book of the Lord, even though I go astray. Draw me near to thee. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for the opening of our eyes again this morning. That is our prayer and our desire this morning that you should please draw us nearer. No matter the devil that are trying to pull us back with life, follow, with challenge of life, with the cares of life. Baba, we ask from you this hour, the grace, O oh Lord, to draw close to you, to be more focused and to be more of you. Father, give unto everyone of us this morning in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we are going home all of this week. We are trusting you. We are depending on you. We are looking up to you as a father. Your word says, is anything too difficult for you? Well, we know, we know, we know, we know, sure, that there's nothing that you cannot do. We are just believing that we attend to what? We attend to every home, every life, oh Lord. Trusting you for one thing or the other, oh Jehovah. We pray that you intervene, oh Lord, and attend to our need individually in the name of Jesus Christ. Jehovah, we are lifting up our children that are going back to school. We have no key, we have no strength of our own to look over them in the, in the school. But we are trusting you. We are trusting them into your able care. That you watch over them day and night. Lord. We pray as many that have been traveling either far and near, that, that we pray that your Shekinah glory, your eyes will be upon them. That these children will stand for you. When they are going through the storm of life, you will whisper to them. You will reveal yourself to them. That proclaim your goodness and your favor. You will proclaim your goodness, you know. Daddy, Jehovah, we are believing you, Daddy, again, for these children, you know. Nothing, you know, will separate them from you. You will keep them close to you. Daddy, we thank you. As we are going this week again, we, did, we believe we are believing you, O Lord, that you will intervene in the situation of Nigeria. In this country, O Lord, we are we have nowhere to run to. You are the Lord that brought us here. And I know you are able to keep us to the end. Daddy, Lord, as the storm are blowing, all things are working, all the fuel, the things, even the, the, the transport to the different home to the working place. It is only you that can do it. Not God, no, not in Ubu, but we are having you as our father. And I know you will see us through. You will be our body, Jehovah transportation. You will provide for us. You will accommodate us. You will feed us. Thank you because it is done. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. <laughs> We have the apple of God divine. We 